In this video, we'll review regulations related to drugs. As we begin to review regulations, let's back up in history again. In the 1800s, Miss Winslow's syrup quiets a crying baby. It contains morphine. Coca-Cola was rumored to use cocoa leaves, which is cocaine. Arsenic was used to treat syphilis, and then there were those patent products which offered questionable remedies. The traveling medicine shows flourished during the 1800s with sales pitches pending miracle cures, elixirs, and other various products of a questionable nature. Serious concerns were starting to be raised about these tonics and their safety, so in 1906, the Pure Food and Drug Act was put into law. Ingredients had to be labeled. False claims were banned and habit-forming drugs must have a warning label. Can you think of why this law was important? Let's consider allergies, tainted products, and misleading labels. In 1938, the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act caused the formation of the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. Medical devices and cosmetics are now under government control. This law required drugs to be pre-approved. It was amended in 1951, and this amendment defined what substances needed a prescription. The Controlled Substance Act in 1970 established the DEA, or the Drug Enforcement Administration. This act gave a legal foundation to prevent drug abuse. The Orphan Act of 1983 helps facilitate the development of drugs for rare diseases. You know, pharmaceutical manufacturers had been reluctant to develop medications for rare diseases because of lack of profit. This act gives tax credits, market exclusivity, and it waives fees for the manufacturers. Several authorities regulate and oversee the safe delivery of medications as well as ensure safe practices among healthcare workers. OSHA, or the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, is a branch of the Department of Labor that helps ensure that all workers are not exposed to unnecessary job-related risks. The Food and Drug Administration, or the FDA, oversees the safe development of drugs. The DEA, or the Drug Enforcement Administration, regulates the manufacturing, distribution of narcotics, stimulants, depressants, hallucinogens, and anabolic steroids. The DEA assigns which drugs are controlled, and it assigns a schedule which is based on addictive pot potential. Addiction means being compulsively driven to take a drug, often to the exclusion of all other activities. The allied health professional must be alert of signs of addiction in both patient and colleagues. Schedule 1 drugs are illegal drugs with no medical ac medically acceptable use. If you notice on this list, we have marijuana. I'm looking to see now that some states have legalized it, that that schedule will be changed. Schedule two medications have a high abuse potential and a severe risk for dependence, but they have a medically acceptable use. On that list, you'll see our heavy hitter pain medications and methamphetamines, things like that. If you look on down the schedules, you'll see diazepam or Valium. This is a scheduled four. It still has an abuse potential and a dependence potential, but it's very limited. Then we go down to schedule five, and that's our cough medications with coding. For an investigational new drug to be approved, it goes through four phases of development. In phase one, 20 to 100 healthy people take the drug to check for harmful effects. If there are any harmful effects, the drug trial ends. This process takes several months, and they're looking at drug safety. Is the drug safe? Does it do harm? In phase two, hundreds of people who have the disease that the drug is made for take this medication. This process takes several months to two years. They're looking at efficiency. Does the drug help the patient? In phase three, hundreds to thousands of people take the drug. This process takes about one to four years, and the focus is on dosage. How much should the patient be given? Now, if the trials show that it's safe, effective, and the dosage is established, the manufacturer applies to the FDA for approval. They submit a new drug application with these scientific testings. This process can take up to 12 years from the trials to the approval. The manufacturer usually receives a patent for 17 to 20 years to recoup their costs and make a profit. You know, surveillance of drugs is ongoing after approval through MedWatch. 
This is referred to as phase four. So let's talk about drug names. The FDA assigns a chemical name that's meaningful for the researcher. Can you guess what medication this is? So after a drug clears trials and it's ready for market, a brand name is given by the company who developed the drug. They own the rights to that name until the patent is gone. You will see the first letter of brand names, they're capitalized, and they may be followed by an R or a TM with a circle that signifies the name is a registered trademark. This means that no other manufacturer can use that name during the patent period. Sometimes brand names can reflect what a drug does. Can you guess what these medications do? Asthma quart, yes, is for asthma. Eliminite is for elimination. Flexeril is a muscle relaxer and glucotrol, like glucose, is for diabetes. When the FDA approves a drug, it is given a generic or a common name. Then, once a drug's patent period has ended, the drug's trademark status is not protected, so other companies can produce this drug under its common or generic name. Because these companies aren't doing the research or the marketing, they can produce this medication much more cheaply. You know, the NCLEX boards for nursing are now using the generic names on the exams. So as we go through our study of pharmacology, we're really going to focus on the generic names. Acetaminophen is the generic name for Tylenol. Well, that concludes the lecture on regulations regarding medications. If you have any questions, let me know.